Live from Giant Stadium in the heart of the Meadowlands of New Jersey, the kickoff classic features Penn State's Nittany Lions against the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. This telecast is brought to you by the new Right Guard deodorant stick. You work hard, you need Right Guard. And by Rico of America, proud to be a sponsor of the kickoff classic. And by a company called TRW, where tomorrow is taking shape. And by Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. And by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. Over 70,000 fans, Giant Stadium, the beautiful Meadowlands complex here in New Jersey for the opening of the kickoff classics. An ideal night for football here on August 29th. Game time temperature, 72 degrees. Hi, everybody. I'm Kurt Gowdy, and welcome to the first kickoff classic. You know, last September 25th, little did we know that the unofficial national championship was decided when Penn State nipped Nebraska in the last four seconds. Nebraska didn't lose a game the rest of the year. Neither did Penn State, and Penn State won the poll. So here we are, Lee Corso, the former head coach at Louisville and in Indiana, nearly a year later. Now when they match up, what's the difference? Well, Penn State lost seven fine football players to the pros, including an All-American All quarterback, an All-American tailback. They've got two quarterbacks that have not played before and a tailback with a bad knee. But defense is their game and I'll tell you what they got four legitimate All-Americans on defense what about Nebraska you've heard of the four horsemen of Notre Dame you might see the four thoroughbreds of Nebraska they've got a dynamite offensive football team but the problem is they only got one ball to play with that's right they have three Heisman Trophy <laughs> candidates in the same backfield down on the field roaming the sidelines will be my cohort Dave Dials what's it feel like down there Dave well as you know Kurt when this game was first put on the board neither coach was enthusiastic about it all as a matter of fact Joe Paterno voted no at the NCAA convention but his players and those of Tom Osborne were enthusiastic and that has spread it's become infectious both coaches are enthusiastic somebody asked me if I wanted to spend August night uh, covering football in the Meadowlands I said no I want to go here Willie Nelson here I am and I'm enthusiastic too. All right, Dave, now a little bit later, we're going to meet the two head coaches and their starting lineups as they come out and talk about them. We'll be right back here at Giant Stadium. We'll be back. Penn State has just come out. They'll be in white tonight. Joe Paterno, there he is, 17 years as head coach following Rip Engel, 15 bowl games for him. Four undefeated seasons, three seasons of only one loss, four seasons of two losses. You're you know a good what, friend of his. What well, about Joe Paterno? For 23 years, I've been a good friend of him, and one of the great things about Joe Paterno is not that one and loss record, but the fact that 90% of the scholarship athletes that have played for Joe Paterno have graduated from, Joe, from Penn State. Now, what's going through Joe Paterno's mind right now is the fact that I promise you, He's got goosebumps up and down his neck. It's like starting on Broadway. And here comes the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. You notice the field tilting a little bit? Yeah, they're, they're big. They've always been big there, especially big linemen. Tom Osborne, a low-key fellow. There he is, 10 years as head coach. Ten times in a row, finished in the top 10 of the country each year. I think he should be called the E.F. Hutton of college coaches. He doesn't talk very much, but when he does, everybody listens. Look at that record. I just ran into the athletic director, Bob Devaney, who's one of the all-time great college coaches. He says this man is the best coach in America. Well, I tell you, he may be partial, but he, he doesn't say much. Well, he ought to be partial. I just ran into the athletic director at Penn State. He said Paterno was the best coach in America. All right, we're going to be back here with the toss of the coin and the opening kickoff right after this message. Did Penn State, Nebraska, the kickoff classic. We're supposed to have some parachutists from the United States Air Force Combat Control Team of the 21st Air Force stationed at McGuire Air Force Base jumping onto the field with uh, the game ball and the coin, but I don't see them, so maybe uh, whether something has uh, canceled that. Right now, the captains are going out. 
The coin used in the official toss is the 1983 U.S. Olympic silver coin. There it is. The Treasury Department has minted the coin to raise funds for the 84 Olympics. Here come the jumpers now. They're overhead. The captains for Penn State in the white. Ron Heller, Ken Jackson on offense. Mark Robinson, Scott Radisick on defense. And uh, for Nebraska, here come the jumpers in. From a helicopter, 3,300 feet high. And their goal is to come on in to the 50-yard line. The big crowd now craning their necks to watch them land. You watch them, too. the second one in. This will be closer to the 50. This guy must be on the first team. 49. He just missed it. <laughs> There's the game ball. The ceremonial game ball by one of the Air Force uh, parachutists. Mike Cranmer and Mike Keeley are the defensive captains for Nebraska. The offensive captains will be the quarterback, Turner Gill, and the right guard, Dean Steinkuhler. Down there are the dignitaries, uh, Vincent DePaul Dratty, the chairman of the board, the National Football Foundation, the Hall of Fame, Bob McCohey, the commissioner and chief executive officer of the New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority. They're sponsoring this game each year. And Laura Smith, the general manager of the New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority. It's through the efforts of these men and their organizations that the kickoff classic has become a reality. All right, let's sum this up again. Any game this early is a tough one to figure. But on paper, knowing what they have coming back, the edge on offense to Nebraska, a backfield returning intact. And three of those backs are good enough to vie for the Heisman Trophy. The quarterback, Gill, the eye back, Rozier, and the flanker, Fryer. Penn State has some marvelous players on defense. They're very questionable at quarterback. The running backs are not experienced except for two. So you'd say that Penn State will hang in this game and win it if they do on defense and Nebraska on offense. And also the kicking game could become very important and the edge goes there to Penn State. On this field, we have probably two or three of the best kick and punt returners in college football. Irving Fryer, number 27, and Mike Rozier, number 30, and also Jeff Smith, number 28. Now they're going to put Smith in with Rozier to open the game. 28 is Smith. Rozier is number 30. Here's your kicker. And uh, that's Herb Bellamy for Penn State. Rather a surprise. We may, uh, let's get a quick report on the tailback with a bad knee or a gimpy knee, John Williams. What about it, Dave? You found out anything? Uh, Kurt, I have. I just spoke with him a month ago, and I signaled to the knee, and I said, how is it? And we assume he's going to be tentative, but he says he's not. He says, I'm ready to go full blast. We'll have to wait and see. All right, here we go with Bellamy to kick off. Rozier and Jeff Smith, the speech to are deep. Rozier handles it, fumbles it on the 20, and recovers it. Fortunately, what a way to open the season, fumbling the opening kickoff over to the other club, but he averted it when he alertly went forward and pounced on it. So it'll be Nebraska's ball, first down, and they'll spot the ball on the Nebraska 25. Gill's the quarterback, Rozier is the deep man, the eye back, Shaleen is the fullback, Fryer is the wing back. Split into Simmons, the other flanker, Fryer, there's the offensive line. Krainowitz is the key man there. He's replacing Dave Remington, the most honored interior lineman in the history of college football. All right, Friars flank to the left, Simmons to the uh, right. Here we go, the first play, a mix-up in the backfield. Gill sprinting out, being chased by Zordich. Zordich nails him, a sophomore linebacker who is destined for greatness at Penn State. He started three games as a freshman. Number 43, Zordich got him. There's a Penn State defense. They play a four-man front. Only two down linemen, you'll notice. The Hines and Gattuso are down on their hands. There's the linebackers. 
Vatasic the key there in All-American. And the secondary, the two potential All-Americans there. Scott Kimball is in now as a flanker. Fire a slot. The pitch goes to Rozier. Rozier fights his way back to the 24. Rozier last year averaged 140 yards a game. The lowest output for the season was 86 yards against Penn State. They really keyed on him last year, so Nebraska hurt Penn State passing. And also, Penn State is famous for always taking away the best ball player on the other team. Joe Paterno has been famous for years for doing that, including Herschel Walker. Third down, 12, a slot left. Simmons and Fire slotted out to the left. Just started here, the kickoff classic. Turner Gill, for his first pass. To Rozier at the 20, 25, 30. Jumped at the 34-yard line, short of a first down. The rascal will have to punt. The hit is made by Greg Gattuso, a defensive tackle who roams all over this field, and the man who led Penn State in tackling last year, Mark Robinson, All-American safety. Here comes Gattuso out, number seven. Scott Livingston will punt. And Kenny Bow, number 11, and Kenny Jackson, 82. Jackson and Bow are two of the best also. Any one of these kickoff or punt returners for either club can break a long one at any time. They specialize in it. Fourth down two for Nebraska. Livingston boots it. Beautiful kick. Twisting spiral. Bow on the 14 to the 15. For the 20, and down he goes in the 21-yard line. And it is Tom Rathman, second-string fullback, who went down to cover for Nebraska. So Penn State now goes on the attack. First down on the 21. Doug Strang at quarterback. John Williams at tailback. Tony Mumford at fullback. Jackson and Bow are the flankers. The tight end is Kirk Bowman. There's the uh, line. Teller, McGinnis, Hayden, Wooster, and Short. They run out of uh, all kinds of setups. Jackson, flank to the right, bow to the left. Strang threw only 22 passes last year, backing up Todd Blackledge. He rolls out, he's going to throw on the first play of the game to Jackson at the 30. Jackson out of bounds on the 32-yard line. Kenny Jackson, number 82. Joe Paterno says, I wouldn't trade him for any flanker in America. Tom Osborne wouldn't trade Fryer either. There's going to be a little boot action. What they're trying to do, first of all, with Strang is to complete the first pass. Remember, he hasn't played very long. He throws a nice, short, concise pass. Perfect play to Jackson. Remember, the key to Strang is starting off nice and smooth. Strang is a junior from Linwood, New Jersey. Now a lone setback. Tony Mumford is the fullback. You'll see this a lot tonight. Nebraska may be blitzing tonight, too. Here's Mumford. He can run... Uh, the speed for a fullback from Linden Old New Jersey. Bill Weber, the left end, and Rob Stuckey, the right guard, hitting there. All right, there's Nebraska defensive line. They play a five-man front. They have two linebackers, Mark Dom and Mike Knox. Then they have a monster man, Mike McCashman, who's field number two. And the cornerbacks are Neil Harris, Dave Burke, the safety man, their best player, Brett Clark. Semidio's out. John Williams is in. Here's a pass drang. It is nearly intercepted. Mike McCashlin nearly picked it off, intended for Kenny Jackson. Penn State immediately is going to the short passing game with Strang, number 18, to try to get his confidence. Burke right there probably has had a problem. He got hurt in practice Friday out there. Remember when we were out there, Kurt? He ran into that right. defensive back. He might have a problem with his knee. We've got to watch that as the game goes on. Third down, nine to go. Penn State under 33, no score. 12-18 to play in the first period. Jackson is to the left. Bow to the right is a wide out. Low setback. Strangle throw, good protection. Lobs it deep for the tight end, Demidio. It's over his head. Dean Demidio, Westchester, Pennsylvania. He was smothered by Brett Clark, the Nebraska safety man. And now Penn State must kick. And George Reynolds will come in to do the punting. I guess uh, in pregame estimates, uh, Lee, Penn State gets the edge on kicking. No question, because they've had a kicker that kicked the ball before. But I, Livingston booted that ball beautifully for a man who's never punted a ball in college football before. 
Irving Fryer, number 27, Jeff Smith, 28, are the deep men. Fryer finished fourth of the nation in punt returns last year, third the year before. Mike Stillman is the snapper. It's a high spiral, fair catch call on the 22. Incidentally, this year, a new rule, no defensive player can come within two yards of the safety man on the ball's downward flight. In other words, they can't go in and stare him in the face run by him the way they used to do. We'll be back with more play-by-play -play from Giant Stadium right after this word. Looking down here in the Meadowlands, over 70,000 on hand for this first kickoff classic. Here are the Olympic circles we'll be seeing on the Goodyear blimp. Last year, Nebraska number one in total offense Number one in rushing, 394 yards a game. Number one in the nation in scoring, 43 points a game. The pitch is to Rosier. He's at the 25 and pounded down at the 27. He's hit there by Radisic, the inside linebacker, and Zordich, the outside linebacker. That's a little bit more like uh, Nebraska. The first series of downs wasn't Nebraska. They got a little too fancy. They usually like to come out of a huddle, line up, roll up their sleeves, and find out how good a man you are. Well, last year they uh, they rushed 394 yards a game, passed 124, better than the three to one ratio, run over pass. Second down, five, Nebraska, under 27. Option play, Turner Gill, the quarterback, is out to the 35 and has a first down. Harry Hamilton, the hero, the rover in the Penn State defense made the hit on him. Turner Gill wanted to go to Oklahoma. But he's an outstanding baseball player. He was drafted by the White Sox out of high school. In fact, two major league clubs have drafted him. He plays shortstop on the Nebraska baseball team. And Nebraska said, come on, play baseball and football. We don't mind. So he's completing his career at Nebraska. First down, Nebraska on her 35. No score, first period. Gill to Rozier. Rozier is hit by 55, shakes away. He got away from two men, the penetration was made by Tom Johnson. He got to him, slowed him down, but Rozier showed you his running ability. He still picked up three yards. That's what you want to try to count tonight. How many yards Rozier and his running backs make after the first contact by a defensive man? That's how you test a really great running back. Not those guys who run through those big holes. Well, he set the all-time record in the single season, 1,689 yards for Nebraska last year. Many games set out the second half. Gill. On the run, he's got Fryer open at the 40, 35. Kenny Fryer taken away and is knocked down by Mark Robinson, the safety man, number 32. Fryer, Gil Brand of the Dallas Cowboys said, here's the number one prospect as a flanker in America. He's fast and he's very strong. He's got great speed. He'll fake the ball to Rozier and he'll come out. They've sent number seven. You can't see him. Simmons deep and he lobs his ball. This is why Coach Osborne says, that this combination is the best combination he's ever coached in Nebraska because they got great natural ability. 23-yard pass play, Irving Fryer from Mount Holly, New Jersey. He's close to home. Nebraska has their second first down in a row. They're on Penn State's 40. Gill, quick toss to Rozier. Rozier taken down on the Penn State 36. And the tackle is by 86, John Walter, the defensive end. This looks a little bit more like Nebraska. Give the ball to Rozier, fake the ball to Rozier, and throw it to Fryer. The option play is the number one play on this football team because Gill, without a question, is the greatest quarterback in college football today who runs and throws. He's a threat on the run. He's a threat on the rollout to pass, and he can drop back and pass. Shane Swanson has replaced Fryer as the flanker now. He's the number 17. There's a hit. There's a flag down. Great Gattuso, number 70, penetrating. They may have a face mask on this, though. Incidentally, we have six officials in this game. It's the face mask. Robert Woods, the referee in the white hat. Scott Dawson's the umpire. The linesman is William Jamerson. The line judge is Carl Herkovich. The field judge is James Robertson. The back judge, William Lovett. They're all from the Atlantic Coast Conference. They're all neutral. And incidentally, this year, under the collegiate football rules, there'll be seven officials assigned to games. There are six. Let's watch it, Lee. Watch Catuso, number 70. He just looks mean. He jumps quick. Now, remember, there's two kinds of face pass 
face max penalty, one intentional is 15 yards. That was not intentional, so it was only a five yard penalty. Second down, two yards to go. Hill on the option, tracks the first down. So he has that option. He watches that defensive end. If the ends floats out to take the trailer, he cuts inside of him like he did there. He options, he does what the defensive end tells him to and do. And it looks like the defensive end's theory at Penn State is to force Gill to run the ball. They do not want him to pitch the ball to Rozier. Breyer's back in as a flanker. Jeff Smith's in as a tailback. He's a terrific junior, but he's got a Heisman Trophy man ahead of him. Nebraska, first down on the 28th of Penn State. No score. Reverse to Fryer, 25. Reverses back, pounds his way to the 22. Zordich, the outside linebacker, the sophomore hit him. And Radisic helped him. There's a great picture of Tom Osborne. Tom Osborne is his own offensive coordinator. In fact, at the banquet last night, Joe Paterno called him one of the greatest offensive coaches in the history of college football. It is second down four. There's a record last year, first in every category. Same backfield returning. Rozier is back in as a high back. Now he'll be the deep man. Shaleen is the fullback ahead of him. Good block. Second down, four to go. Nebraska threatening. Whistle. Flags go down. They have 25 seconds to get a playoff in college football. Let's see if they took too much time. I heard him say two penetrations. Legal delay. That's it, a legal delay. That'll penalize them back to the 27 of Penn State. Make it second down and nine to go. Osborne, by the way, is a doctor. A doctor of psychology has his doctor. What happened in that situation, they were trying to automatic and call, change the play at the line of scrimmage, and they run out of time. That's why in college football you see less automatics than pros because the pros have 30 seconds to put the ball in play. Delay against the red. Second down. Second down, nine. 7.45 to go in the first period here at the Meadowlands in New Jersey. No score. The defending national champs in white, Penn State, against the team in red, Nebraska, picked by both wire service polls to win the national title this year. They've won 10 in a row. Penn State has a winning streak of seven in a row, carrying over from last year. Rozier out in motion. The pass is to Fryer at the 15, and he's dumped at the 14. Second pass by reception by Irving Fryer. He was hit by Chris Sidner, the defensive back. We have a flag down, I believe. You might be wondering why that man's so wide open, because the man covered, you see number 17, he watched Rozier, and they threw the ball to Fryer. Nine, 97 Radisek is one of the best linebackers in America, but he's not fast enough to care, cover Fryer. That's the number one play they've got right now. That's right, they're getting Fryer out there and isolating him on a linebacker. Shot block on the red. Okay, uh, I that's can illegal. That's a chop drop. Right. I can explain that to you. What happens is an offensive lineman will set up the defensive lineman, and another one will block him below the waist. That's called a chop block. That's a 15-yard penalty because it could cause a serious injury. Second down, 24. Is that thunder I hear in the background? We may have a threat of rain. What a rainstorm we had here last night. No score. 7:15 to go in the first period. The master hurting himself now with penalties. Swanson's in at the flanker, replacing Fryer. The pass is complete and down at the 32 goes Scott Kimball, second string split in from Camarillo, California. Mark Fruan, the defensive back, was there to fall on top of him. That's a 10 yard gain, but they're still short. They have third down and 14. There's a good shot of that. That Gill. Gill is a two-time All-Big 8 quarterback. He was the outstanding back in the Orange Bowl in 1982. That young man right there. He made 500 yards rushing last year. Mr. Corpus got pass completion. There's a rollout again. Goes on a run. He's got Swanson. Swanson is down. 
down at the one-yard line, and Turner Gill is killing him right now with those rollout passes. He threw for 239 yards against Penn State last year and two touchdowns and ran for one. And it's, it's exactly the same play that just hit Fryer. You'll see him roll out, he, and he gets a lot of protection, but watch as he sends a man deep. He's got a little seam there, and he throws the ball with a perfect shot to Swanson. What they're doing there is they're driving one man deep and then they're dragging a man underneath him. Great offensive theory. Turner Gill now has hit four out of four for 74 yards. The last one a 31-yarder, first and goal to go. Shaleen, the fullback, does not make it. Mark Shaleen, there's another flag down. You'd expect flags in an opening game. And turnovers and fumbles, we haven't had those so far. Now some rain coming, no flag down. It was inadvertently thrown. Rain is starting to come down. Now, but usually in a situation like this, the quarterback will be instructed to run a quarterback sneak. The reason is because there's no ball handling, therefore there should be no fumble. Rain coming down here in the Meadowlands. Second down, a half yard to go, and they run the sneak. I don't believe they made it. Scott Radisick burrowed in there. Number 41, Steve Sefter got underneath the play. That's what you have to do around that goal line. Right. Now, what happens in a situation if they can't make it with a quarterback sneak, you usually have a play where they call it the dive play. In other words, one of those backs that just go right over the top. I would not be surprised to see number 30 jump right over the top of that huddle. Nebraska started this drive on their own 22-yard line. Third down, a half yard to go for Nebraska touchdown. He's got it. Herder Gill scores from Fort Worth, Texas, and he's the man that took this club on a well-executed drive, even though there were three penalties along the way. Gill took him down, hit four for four on the drive. Nebraska moves 78 yards for the score. The thing that makes him so difficult, he's such a great athlete. You know, Kurt, in two of those plays, they were really natural ability plays. He just did it on his own. Dave Schneider of Plattsmouth, Nebraska, a sophomore, We'll try the point. I just saw an indication of why Nebraska led the nation in scoring, rushing yards, and total offense last year. That kick is up and good. So it was 4.54 to go in the first period. The University of Nebraska, seven. Penn State University, nothing. The rain here at the Meadowlands falling. Let's take a look at that quarterback sneak on third down, a half yard. Turner Gill going over. He tried it in the middle the first time. That time he went over the left guard. That's what he must have found out, that they could go over a little bit to the left. Remember, the reason why he did this is there would be no chance of an error. And they ran right at number 41. This telecast presented by authority of Cat Sports. Any rebroadcast the cast of this game without the explicit written consent of Cat Sports is prohibited. Sid Lewis, a freshman, 21. Kevin Bow, number 11, are deep. Scott Livingston will kick off. He did the punting. He may have won both jobs during the month of August when Nebraska started their workouts. This is California. 7-0. Nebraska has struck first. And here's the boot. There's a wobbler. Bounding around. This is a good Nebraska bounce. Gives them time to cover. Bow has it. And Penn State has stopped within their own 15. Boy, Paterno won't be happy about that. You want to get the ball. You've got to get it outside your 20. You want to get it up in the 30s or 40s for field position. And when you're pinned back under your 15, that's a poor kick return. There's the scoring drive. 12 plays, 78 yards. Turner Gill going a half yard and a sneak for the score. And I would say it was a Turner Gill drive. All the way. Doug Strang, the quarterback. It's on the 12-yard line of Penn State. First down. The mid Split in. They're going to throw. And it is nearly intercepted. The pass bouncing off the hands of Kirk Bowman, number 80. Bowman, oddly enough, caught only two passes last year. Both were for touchdowns and both in the Penn State game. There's Turner Gill. Fort Worth, Texas. I bet you his mom is proud of him right now. I tell you what, he's a fine all-around athlete. Can you imagine being that great a baseball player? 
and a football player? Well, he's going to be like John Elway. He'll have a tough decision to make this spring. Second down, then the goal. Here's the draw play. And that's Tony Mumford. And now Nebraska's defense sparked by their offense who took the ball 78 yards playing heads up on the defense. It's an, an interesting thing we said before the game. We were concerned about Williams. There's Joe Paterno. Look at that. Ranks ninth in the NCAA. We were concerned about Williams' leg. You know what happened? They haven't played Williams one play yet, number 44. The only returning star they had offensively. He played fullback last year. They were going to shift him back to tailback. This is a third and nine. Tight end in motion. A rollout. Frank throws on the run over the head of Bowman, way over his head. And Penn State must check. Brett Clark came up to cover it. They have a flag down along the sideline. Anytime you have a rollout, you have a threat of, uh, that's a legal use of hand. No, I, the push to foul, is it? Personal foul, and, and, I, and I think he might have hit him as he went out of bounds. And if you'll get a good shot, you'll see that white six foot square around the uh, field. You cannot hit a man once he leaves that area on the outside. The referee has got the white hat on. That's because he's the good guy. Right now the Nebraska's not very good. Personal foul on the red. First down. Well, Penn State gets a break. They're about to relinquish the ball. They would have had a fourth and nine. Now they have a first down on their own 28-yard line. But they look ragged on offense so far. They look inexperienced, just like we thought they might. John Williams is in there now. Number 44 is the tailback. Mumford's the fullback. The pitches to Williams. Williams gets some yardage, comes up the sideline. They'll mark him out of bounds on the 36. He's driven out by Brett Clark, number 10, the safety man. He had a good block from the left guard who pulled Dick McGinnis of State College. Well, you don't know how important that is. Anytime a young football player has a knee operation and does not play spring football, you're really concerned. And there he comes off limping. I just don't feel that he's going to be able to take the punishment that Brass is going to give it to him, Kurt. Well, they have a freshman in there, Sid Lewis, a uh, redshirt freshman from Canton, Ohio. He was the 100 and 200 meter sprint chapter. Ohio. Mumford on a quick opener over the 40, drives to the 41. And Rob Stuckey, the right tackle, got him and Mark Dom. A light rain falling now. It's a lesson, but uh, what's it like down there, Dave? <laughs> A light rain. It's very light in the booth. It's very heavy down here. I want our Nebraska fans to understand why I'm wearing the blue jacket. Some nice soul on the Penn State bench let me use it. I promise to wear a red one if it's still raining in the second half, Kurt. All right. First down, Penn State. They're on their 41. They're trailing 7 0. 330 to go in the first period. Doug Strang over the head of Mumford. Tony Mumford on a swing pattern. The ball was not well thrown, Lee. Well, Strang looks right now exactly like Joe Paterno was afraid he would be. He's not very, very confident. Now, you've got to understand, the guy only threw the ball 22 times, I think, last year. So he's going to have a hard time. Penn State is not playing exactly the way Penn State usually plays. Penn State usually comes out, rolls up their sleeves, and tests the other guy's manhood. They get a little too fancy so far. They've hit only one out of five passes for 11 yards. That was the first pass Strang threw, a junior quarterback. Second down, 10. The pitch is to Sid Lewis. Lewis ran into his own blocker, and he's smothered by Mark Dom, the strong side linebacker of Dix, Nebraska. And Rob Stuckey went in there and knocked the blocker into the ball carrier. Stuckey is the right tackle, number 75. He's 6'3", 250, an all-Big 8, all-American, and all-academic player right there. He got a 3.5 average in finance. And I tell you what, he might need it if he keeps playing like that. Double tight end offense for Penn State. They're on their 43rd and 11. Nebraska leading 7-0. The difference in this game so far, the quarterback is all the way. Turner Gill, a senior, experienced against the youngster Strang, starting his first game. He shakes away. Now he throws. He incomplete. Sail right through the hands of Tony Mumford. A big pass rush by Mike Tranmer, the nose guard. He had him trapped, sprang behind the line, and let him get away. 
Mike Trammer, watch him. He's 6'5", 11, 230 pounds. He'll, he'll use a great pull technique. You know him grab that number 58 and pull him, Hayden? Now, the reason he did that, it was because he wanted to use that hand as leverage. Most football teams use tight-fitting jerseys, so they can't do that. Confirmation, George Reynolds to do the kicking on fourth down. A high one. Jeff Smith, fair catch on the 13-yard line of Nebraska. And the Cornhuskers will have a first down. So here on the stadium clock, 2.30 to go in the first period. 78-yard by drive by Nebraska. They lead 7-0. Watson. He caught two. He caught. He caught two. He caught one in the seat. Thirteen-yard line of Nebraska. First down. They have a replacement of fullback Tom Rathman. He's a sophomore from Grand Island. He'll be number 26, replacing Mark Shaleen. Nebraska's used to big crowds. They've had 124 home sellouts in a row, and this year every home game is a sellout again. Already in the last 21 years, over 8 million people have seen Nebraska football games in Lincoln. Let's mark this ball on the 14 of Nebraska. First down. Turner Gill, the quarterback. Rozier is the eye back. The fullback has it. That's Rathman. They'll run a option. They'll run a double option. Massey Antonio, number 84, and Joe Hines. Number 52 teamed up to stop Tom Rathman. Play didn't look like much, leave it again five yards. They like that play because it gets their offensive line to hit people. That's Nebraska style football. Second down, five. Nebraska just short of its 20. Rozier in motion. That's Fryer on a reverse. He has a first down. Then he fires over the 25 to the 26. You take a good look at him. Mike Zordich tackled him. Here he is coming back 27. Look at his arms. If he had uh, a bare arm jersey there, he has powerful arms and legs. He's a strong flanker. He was the number one receiver for Nebraska last year, and his best game was against Penn State when he caught seven passes for 112 yards. First down, Nebraska. They're on their 25. They're leading 7-0. There's the pitch to Rozier. Rozier's over the 30. This is what they do to you. They just pound away with the quick tosses, pitches, hits up the middle, now and then a reverse or an option play, and they keep the ball on you. And you notice they'll run a reverse play about every five plays because what happens is to stop Nebraska, you've got to send all your players over there. There's Joe Paterno. What a record. 57 years old. He's one of the oldest men in Division I football. Second down three for the Cornhuskers on their 33. Shaleen, the fullback, breaks into the open at the 50, 45, 40, 35, first down Nebraska on the 33-yard line of Penn State, and Mark Robinson, the safety man, saved the touchdown on a deceiving player, Shaleen, who's very fast for a 225-pound fullback. Watch, Dill. Everybody's watching Rozier, and they block number 97, Radicek, on his feet, and there he goes. He's 5'10", 225 pounds. He's the fastest man, and you know what happens? You talk about Rozier, you talk about Gill, all of a sudden, there he goes. Nebraska's on Penn State's 33, first down. They're dominating this game. They're ahead 7-0. Here's Gill keeping the ball. 30, 25, 20, and he's down inside the 15. Right now, he has Penn State mystified Turner Gill. They don't know who's got the ball. This is what we talked about having so many weapons. Gill will fake the ball to Rozier. Remember, Rozier is always catching the fakes or getting the ball. Nobody knows who's got it from now on. It's just his athletic ability. 19-yard run. Here it is. Turner Gill. Robbins has made four tackles in a row now. The safety man of Penn State. First down, Nebraska. We have 10 seconds to go in the first period. They're on the 14-yard line. Gill's toss. Bad throw. And, uh, you know, if that ball had hung up there, number 27... Chris Sidner had a chance for an interception. The pass was intended for Irving Fryer, but it was sort of tipped on the way to the receiver, and it died a quick death there on the playing field. It was an automatic because number 17, Harry Hamilton, was the strong safety blitz. This fellow's like Bud Grant. He never changes expression. 
Tom Osborne. Second down, 10. This will be the last play of the first quarter. Nebraska's on Penn State's 14. Not a movement up front. Penn State looked like they penetrated, but were they drawn off? Inga Britston, the tight end, moved number 83 on Nebraska. Let's see what they call it. Offside, Nebraska. They'll go back to the Penn State 19 and make it second down, 15 to go. Still three seconds remaining in the first quarter. Dead ball foul. Let's check the penalties on Nebraska. On the red, second down. They have had four penalties for 40 yards. Penn State's had one for five yards. There's John Williams, supposed to be the starting tailback. He's bothered with a gimpy knee after a, a skiing accident. And the winner had had the knee operation. A second and 15. A keeper by Gill. He'll throw. He completes it. And that's the tight end for a touchdown. Monty Ingebrigtsen goes in for the score, the tight end. And Nebraska has scored twice on a vaunted Penn State defense, the defending national champs. From the end zone, you're going to get a great shot. Remember that play that Gill ran where he ran it? This time they send number 83 in the bottom of your picture. He hits an open spot. Ingo Britson scores. He's the fastest tight end they've had so far. Gill is the Heisman Trophy winner, in my opinion. Well, for the first quarter of the season. Yeah, well, huh? got to be start somewhere. <laughs> Here's the kick by Dave Schneider. It is good. And that's the end of the first quarter, ladies and gentlemen, from Giant Stadium. The score, Nebraska 14 and Penn State nothing.